Google has released a brand new AI platform called Notebook LM, and it may change how you do your research, how you do note taking online, and how to organize all your information. Notebook LM is basically an AI powered notebook, but you could ask questions from all your research, you could organize your ideas in a new way. Um, I think it's got a much more organized way, and it's powered by Google's latest AI Gemini models. Now, let me show you around Notebook LM. You could access it via notebooklm.google.com. And now let's go straight into showing you how to use it. You are opening up your Notebook LM. You're gonna be presented with a page similar to this. So at the bottom over here, you can see some samples of what they've done. So you can click on introduction to notebook. And ultimately what you can see over here is all the sources that's been used, the notes that have been taken, and a chat functionality down at the bottom over here. But that's um, all great, but I wanna show you how to use it um, for a real world purpose. All right, so what we're gonna to do today is create a new notebook and you click on the plus sign, all right? It's gonna ask you to upload files immediately, but let's uh, click on close for the time being and let's just name our notebook. So on the top left is your notebook's name. So let's just call this test AI research for US implementation. Okay, let's pop in over here. All right, if you wanted to add your own manual notes, you click on add notes. So click on the new note and what it's going to come up with is a little window where you can type in your notes manually um, and ultimately pop in the um, note heading. All right, so let's just click that over there. All right, so that's great. So that's pretty normal for note taking, nothing too uh, crazy about that. But what you can do is you can chat with that particular note. But before I do that, I want to just show you the sources and the real power behind Notebook LM. All right, it's powered by Google's Gemini models. So you um, save from it crawling the web and adding any information that isn't part of your documentation that you've added. So it basically eliminates those hallucinations um, that can sometimes come through. All right, so let's just add some PDF files. So I've got a couple of PDF files here that I want to add in. We've got the government um, uh, guides, we've got the blueprints, we've got some literacy reports, and we've got some exec gen AI. All right, so, so what it'll do is it'll now upload the information into your environment, which you can reuse at a later point as well. And that's really the powerful part about this. So it's not like your normal consumer grade chat GPT or Gemini, where you pass things in, then you have to try and figure out where the prompts are and where the, where the data is. This is a really helpful little tool here. All right, so it'll take a couple of seconds to load up all the information. As you can see over here on the left-hand side, these are all the sources that's basically been selected to be added to your chat. All right, if we click on sources, you get a number of different options. You can get things from Google Drive, PDF, text files, copy text, web pages, and um, even a markdown file. So if you wanted to add your web page URL into it, you can just click on web page URL and pop in your website. All right, so let's just add that in. What it'll do is it'll go in and index it, scan it, and ultimately uh, you can start using it um, and, and chatting with it as well, which is extremely powerful. All right, so what we're gonna do now is let's just unselect all these sources over here and let's test out how this works. So AI guide for government, um, the blueprint for AI, bill of rights. All right, so let's do that one over there. So we wanna here go and say summarize this um, to three bullet points on the most important uh, principles for implementation. Okay, so again, very similar to um, what you would do in Gemini, passes the information to the large language model and it'll ultimately spit out a uh, result for you. All right, the difference is that it comes back with all these citations. So it's basically telling you where it got all the information from and how it retrieved that information. And ultimately, here's the summary. Okay, so protect the public from harm, protect the public from algorithmic discrimination, and protect privacy by default. All right, so those are the key core principles that the AI Bill of Rights is ultimately aiming for here. All right, so that's great. So what we can do now is we can pin it or we can start adding extra bits to it. So we won't do that just yet. So let's just click on pin. And what you can see now is here's your new note that's been added in. And you can now just say here, uh, three principles to Bill of Rights AI. Okay. 
All right, so these are the three things over here. Um, if you wanted to now add additional sources, so you can click on this plus that, and you can say, create a summary in two bullet points on literacy and governance and AI adoption. All right. So what it's doing now is it's taking the two sources, as you can see in the bottom over here, and it's going to start chatting with it, starting to glean the information and make some short work of it. All right, so he has the summary. So data and literacy are uh, interconnected. Data governance is critical for implementation. All right, so let's just click on that one over there. And um, what we can do now is just click it again and we can just save it over here. So literacy and um, governance. Okay. All right, so as you can see, really simple, really easy to use interface. Now, where the real power behind this starts coming in is if you wanted to start combining these two nodes to start creating a um, an outline or a uh, blog post or to create some training material, or some material that you want to pop on your website. So you can say here, blog post highlighting the key points. All right, so now instead of chatting with the original document and the other document, combining them together in a Word or a notepad, it's now using the power of the large language model and notebook LM to take those two summaries and those two notes that you've done and create the output that you're looking for. Again, extremely powerful way of looking at it. All right, so here's what it's basically produced so off those two pieces of work. Um, it's now cited the two um, uh, notes that we've created and ultimately it's uh, created some outputs for us. So again, really powerful. So we can pin that and now we can just save this as a blog post number one. All right. So again, where could this be useful? It could be useful in a number of ways where you've got multiple pieces of content. You want to try and get the best, best bits out of it store them in a note and then ultimately start chatting with the notes because sometimes what you get is different answers from the notebook LM or from ChatGPT or Gemini and this is a great way to organize your notes and organize your summaries in a really logical and an intuitive way. So again, again a really great game changer um, for the way we do our research. All right, so what we can do now is if we wanted to send this off to ourselves, so we just click on the blog post that we want to do and hit the share button and ultimately you pop in the person that you want to email it to um, and you can just add it like that or you can click on copy link and it will create the information. All right, so that's basically what I've got for you today. Um, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe and uh, happy note taking and researching. Thanks for watching.